Hey guys, even here and in this video we're gonna be taking a look at a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates as you can see we are starting off with Sergio Oliva who apparently is no longer in jail and he's prepping for which show? Well, that is the question. It was originally supposed to be Arnold Classic Brazil or Arnold Classic South America but that show is only in two weeks. Can he be ready in two weeks? There is another photo that we're gonna take a look at to make that conclusion, but before we get to that, I'm just gonna tell you guys, if you wanna support me and my channel, it would really mean a lot if you bought any of the Old School Lab supplements, try whichever one you want, I would suggest to you Vintage Blast, it's a little bit weaker than the Vintage Blast Max, but I think it's great, I honestly prefer this one, because it's a little bit weaker, it's not super strong like the other one, you can use it pretty much every day, and I love all the, all the flavors, you can choose whichever one you like, just make sure to use the code EVAN, that's it, and you get a 15% discount, the link also is down below in the description, thank you guys. Back to Sergio Oliva, so this is him, supposedly at two weeks out, now did he lose some size, did he lose conditioning, while he was in jail based on what I heard, I think he did some interviews, he wasn't really able, I mean he wasn't able to eat proper bodybuilding food of course, and he was stressed out really bad, so of course he would lose the conditioning and the fullness and the size, but I don't know for how long he has been out, for how long he has been training regularly, and how much food he ate in the past, I don't know how, my, how long, and what did he take in the meantime, because right now he doesn't look bad at all. Now, based on all the physique updates during his off-season, I kind of expected him to be like three times bigger than the last time, I thought he really gained a lot of muscle, but based on this update, he pretty much looks similar to what he looked like before when he was competing, so... That, that issue that happened really set him back quite a bit, but I, I would say that he looks a little bit better than before, than the previous time we saw him compete and prep for a show. Uh, I would love to see his legs bigger, but they don't really seem that much bigger and fuller, and I would like to see more fullness in the chest and the shoulders, which again, I'm not really seeing, he looks a little bit flatter. So I don't know at what at what point he is right now. He didn't say in the caption what he is doing. Is he gonna stick to the plan and do the Arnold uh, Brazil in two weeks? Or I think it would make a lot more sense for him to do a later show, such as for example New York Pro that he already won before, because he has enough time to prepare for that one to regain the fullness to regain the muscle that he potentially lost, and to work on bringing serious level of conditioning. I mean, Chris Asito is commenting here in the comment section, but he's not saying anything, really, so we don't know what he's gonna do. Here is the other photo that I mentioned. This one, however, looks much, much better than the other one. The, the, the front last part is such a pose, if you're flat, you're gonna show your flatness in it, especially if you are as wide, as big, if you have as big of a frame, like Sergio, like he has a huge frame and for him to look full and round, he really needs to be massive, he really needs to be full and if he is a little bit flatter, it's gonna show in such a pose, but in the side chest, he can, you know, he can push his arms to his body, he can make his physique uh, show no gaps, he can push the legs one close to another and just make himself appear thicker, so he definitely does look fuller and thicker in the side chest and based on hamstrings and glutes, his conditioning looks good, like he can be ready in two weeks if he wanted to, I mean as far as conditioning, can he be super duper peeled? I don't know, probably not, but he can be okay, he can be conditioned, he can be ready, now as far as the fullness, I think he can be only as good as it was back when he was competing the last time, can he bring something new, something insane, something crazy, like this, I don't know man, I don't know how I don't know how much he lost during that time in jail and how good his muscle memory is and if he can actually bring all that back but even if he did the Arnold, I'm pretty sure it would be his best version ever if the incident didn't happen, then I think it would be something mind-blowing but the way it is right now, he can be good he can win the show and qualify for the Mr. Olympia, I believe and then he can make the improvements needed to actually present something insane, 
So overall, I think things are good for Sergio Oliva, considering all the hardship all he went through in the past couple of weeks. He actually managed to pull through and I think he's going to do good. I think he still can win a pro show and qualify for the Mr. Olympia. Once again, bring something really good, something new to the Mr. Olympia stage. What do you guys think? I'm really curious. Are you seeing this the same way I am or differently? Whatever you think, tell me down below in the comment section. All right, the next one, the next update is really, really interesting, at least to me. I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with Behru Stabani. This guy is coached by Milos Sharchev. He is from Iran. Last year, he qualified for the Olympia by winning Romania Pro against Brett Wilkin. I mean, Brett Wilkin looked amazing at that show. That was potentially his best ever. But Behrouz brought something insane, ridiculous. Like the level of muscle maturity, the conditioning, the fullness, the plastic look, the 3D look. I mean, these Iranians really have this crazy look, like Hari Chopin type of, uh, I would say, skin texture. I have no idea why is this. I've seen this on amateur level over there where I compete in uh, IFBB World Championships. All the Iranian guys have this crazy look to them, like crazy separation, crazy plastic hard look, really crazy hardness. I have no idea if it is genetic. It's probably genetic or could be some kind of substance that they only have over there, or maybe some kind of special food that they're only eating, or they're all training in the same, similar style. I have no idea, I'm pretty sure it's genetic, I don't think it's a coincidence. Anyways, this guy looked absolutely ridiculous here. Even though Brett, I think Brett is a phenomenal bodybuilder, and he really brought it to this show. I, I was pretty sure that Behrouz deserved to win this one, even though he was pretty much a no-name guy at this point. Were you impressed from the front? Take a look at his backside. Take a look at those freaking glutes, man. Who the hell has those kind of separation in their glutes? Like, that's something you do not see very often. Like, even Nick Walker, who is kind of known for conditioning, or, for example, Ian Valier, these guys don't have cuts deep like this. They don't. They just don't. This is the kind of quality that is super-duper rare, and when somebody has this, I think the sky is the limit for a guy like this. Now, that's why I said this is a very interesting subject to me, because I think this guy is the next big thing and potentially a future Mr. Olympia. The reason why he wasn't at the Olympia last year was because he wasn't granted the visa, because he's from Iran, and it's really troublesome for Iranian guys to get to the US. Hadi somehow managed this year, but it wasn't easy for him. Uh, Milo Sharch really tried to get this guy in the United States, but he didn't, he didn't manage. And it was a really shame that he wasn't in that lineup, because if he was, I would have him in my top 10, possibly higher. If you are thinking he only looks good on photos and he's actually a short, small guy or something like that, think twice. Here is Romania Pro two years ago or three years ago, uh, back when he was competing against Samson and Rafael, and he lost to both of these guys. But you could argue that he that he beat them. I wasn't sure who won here. Uh, I can't say that he was robbed, but it was very, very close if you ask me. And this was a long time ago. I mean, all three of these guys really made a lot of progress, especially Samson. But Bacharus did as well. So take a look at him right now. Definitely much, much bigger. Again, he's a taller guy. He's almost as tall as Samson. So with this kind of, with that kind of grainy, mature, uh, granity type of muscle, if he gets like super conditioned as he always does, and if he is improved and bigger, as you can see he is, and Milo Sharger is prepping, so you can be sure that he's gonna be blasting full and super shredded, I'm not sure which show he's doing. I can see everybody asking in the comments, asking him and Milos which show he's prepping for. They're not saying anything. They might be keeping it a secret. I could ask Milos. He would probably tell me, but they'll, they'll announce it. When they feel like it, they will announce it. We will know. I don't think he's uh, like a couple of weeks out. I think he looks, he looks like 10-ish weeks out. So it might be something like New York Pro maybe, Tampa Pro, Toronto Pro, I don't know, we'll see, but right now, like, out of that top 10, top 5 at the Mr. Olympia, all of the guys that need to qualify, 
I don't think anybody looks as good as this. Like, I could see Andrew Jack challenging this guy, but he is done for the year. He's not going to be competing as far as I know. Maybe Hunter Labrada can be a challenge to Behrouz, but honestly, I don't see it. I think this guy is currently, like, 6th, 7th best bodybuilder in the world. Yes, I know it's a very bold statement. I can't prove it or anything. This is just solely based on on what I saw so far from him on the stage, in the gym, in the videos, in the photos, how he looked compared to some of the top guys before. So I have high expectations of this guy. I think he's going to be the biggest, the next big thing. And I think he's Mr. Olympia winning potential because why not? Find me a weak point. Find me, uh, not just a weak muscle point, but like, conditioning, fullness, uh, whatever, like, I don't know, oil somewhere, something like that, just try to find a flaw on this guy's physique, mass, conditioning, like, there is nothing, there is no flaws, and just the sheer quality of this physique is on a super high level, so I'm predicting it right now, I know it's a bold statement, but I'm telling you guys, this year, or next year, or in a couple of years, this guy is going to be one of the top guys at the Olympia. Top three, in my prediction. And lastly, we have a physique update of Robert Timms, aka Mr. Classic Physique. Now, he, he took that nickname before everybody, before anybody else, though I don't think he deserves to, to own it, because I don't think this guy is really that classic. Now, the only reason why I'm mentioning him right now is because Nick Strength and Power kind of made him famous. And uh, yeah, I know, he is super impressive, don't get me wrong, like, he has super small waist, really impressive arms, really bubbly physique, but if you're talking about classic physique, and these guys are comparing him to, you know, the top guys, like uh, Urs and Ramon and Brion and the others, I don't even want to say Chris Bumstead, they're comparing him to the top guys, I don't think he deserves to be compared to those guys because I don't think he's that good. Now, if you're looking at this photo, uh, you, you can see the caption that he is starting his prep. So he's going to be competing. Uh, yes, I think he can win a pro show, no doubt. I mean, 50 guys uh, qualify for the Olympia Classic Physique. So there are much, much worse Classic Physique guys who qualify for the Mr. Olympia. So he can do that, no doubt. But like to be, you know, top 10, top 8... I don't see it happening because in the gym photos, he looks like the Mr. Classic Physique, the Classic Physique Olympia, but Mr. Olympia champion. But on stage, different story, man. He is very, very underwhelming on stage. You can see all the flaws that he is trying to hide uh, in his gym photos. Like in that previous photo, he's wearing jeans, so he's not even showing his lower body and his legs are really weak. And you guys know, I mean, Chris Bumstead, look at his legs, Urs, his legs. Like, these guys have really dominant legs, and that's good proportions, that's good symmetry, that is classic physique, legs dominant, bigger than the upper body. Uh, this doesn't flow that well. Also, his midsection is, I don't know, too long. Uh, abs are not super aesthetic. Like, the only thing that he has is, like, big biceps and really small waist, and that's it. That's all. I know I'm hating on the guy and I'm setting a limit for him, which is something I don't like to do. I don't like if anybody else sets limit uh, on my potential, uh, but like because he's so spoken about, I just wanted to give you my two cents, my piece on what I think about his physique. I think he's way more suited for bodybuilding, he's just not big enough. He's very tall, so if he wanted to do bodybuilding, he would have to be like 400 pounds in the offseason, and I don't think he's going to do that. And for classic physique, he doesn't have the lines, man. That's just it. Like Having a small waist is not all. That's not enough. Small waist and good biceps, good arms. Like That's not it. That's not all it takes. It takes a lot more. It takes a certain flow, a certain look. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Like, you know when you see Chris Bumstead uh, or, like, Urs Kolecinski in the front double. Like, you see that silhouette, those beautiful lines, beautiful shape. This, no, no, that's not it. I don't think he deserves to be called Mr. Classic Physique. 
but that's just me if you guys disagree you can tell me down below in the comment section if you guys enjoyed this video however please give it a thumbs up and once again if you guys want to support me and my channel just buy one of the old school lab supplements and just use the code even it's gonna help me tremendously guys and also i gotta say i'm sorry for not being super active lately i'm competing in one week from now it's my first show and then in another three or four weeks i have my main show european championships over here in ibb uh, so i'm a little bit tired i'm on low carbs i'm doing a lot of cardio so i i don't really have enough time to film videos regularly but in a month from now i'll be back full force and i'll try to blow up this channel maybe i'm gonna start filming my face as well we'll see anyways guys that's it for now once again if you want to show some support buy any of the old school lab supplements like this video if you enjoyed it subscribe to this channel thank you so much guys all the best and bye bye